The, the galaxy is swimming with dark matter, as far as we can tell. About 5% of the universe is normal matter. 5 is normal matter, about 25 is dark matter, and about 70 is dark energy. But nobody knows what it is. It's the cutting edge, massive problems in theoretical physics. These are the most fundamental questions. Why is the universe the way it is? And even possibly, why is there a universe? It is possible that some new form of particle, something else, could be discovered. Yeah. That we very, don't know about yet. Because we know, almost know, that there, there are other particles out there in the universe. We almost so, know? So a thing called dark matter. Yes. So we look out into the universe and we see that there's a lot of stuff there that's interacting gravitationally, but is not interacting strongly with the matter out of which we are made and the stars are made. And we see lots of different observations of the way galaxies rotate and interact. And even the oldest light in the universe, the so-called cosmic microwave background radiation, we see the signature of that stuff in that light as well. So we think that there's some other particle out there. And, and to be honest, we thought we would have detected it, I think, at LHC. We have lots of theories that make predictions for all sorts of different particles that would interact weakly with normal matter. We also look for them, by the way, um, directly. So we have experiments under mountains. We, we bury them under mountains so the cosmic rays from space don't interfere with them. And we're looking for the rare occasions when these dark matter particles bump into the particles of matter in the detector. So, so because the, the idea would be this room's full of them. I mean, the, the galaxy is swimming with dark matter, as far as we can tell, but it interacts very weakly with this matter. So we're looking for the direct detection of it, and we're looking to make those particles at LHC. So it's everywhere, but it doesn't interact with us. Very weakly. Um, so it interacts through gravity, and it, the, the, the archetypal particle that's everywhere that doesn't interact strongly is a neutrino. So we do know about neutrinos, we've detected those. And there, there are something like 60 billion per centimeter squared per second passing through your head now. But they get made in nuclear reactions in the sun. But they go straight through your head and then <laughs> actually straight through the earth, pretty much. Uh, occasionally one of them bumps into something. And we can detect those because there are so many of them uh, going through. But we only detect, you know, I don't know, one or two a day. And the idea is that dark matter encompasses an enormous percentage of the universe. Yes, it's five times as much matter as is dark matter than is normal matter. <laughs> um, and the number is 25% of the universe. So roughly speaking, about 5% of the universe is normal matter. The stars and gas. You know, 25% is dark matter. Yeah, so about, yeah, five is normal matter, about 25 is dark matter, and about 70 is dark energy. That's the other thing. I was the other ask thing. You about. Yeah. Yeah. So what the hell's that? Don't know. Uh, <laughs> know what it does. So again, what? See, if we go back. We, we talked about Einstein's theory earlier. So Einstein's theory, which works spectacularly well, says that if you put stuff into the universe, as we said before, then it warps and deforms and stretches, and it very precisely tells you, given the stuff that you put in it, how much does it stretch, and how does it stretch. So, so we, we observe, the thing we observe is how the universe is expanding and how that expansion rate is changing and how it's, ex how it's changed over time. So we have very precise measurements of that. So then we can use the theory to tell us what's in it. And that's how we discover dark energy. But it's really small. It's tiny, tiny effect. But it's still dominating the universe now. And it will, and it will dominate even more in the future. So we think that we're in a universe that will continue to expand, essentially doubling in size on, on a fixed time scale, which is about 20 billion years. So within every 20 billion years into the future, forever, unless something happens, the universe will continue to, to expand and double in size. Jeez. And that's the dark energy that's driving that. But nobody knows what it is. It's, the, it's one of the cutting edge, massive problems in theoretical physics. It's so crazy when you go from Galileo to modern theoretical physics that they're still in the midst of this understanding yeah. of what all this stuff is. Yeah, I mean, these are, you know, these are fundamental and difficult problems. I and mean, we're talking about the origin and evolution of the universe. Right. It's so important for us to get an understanding of what's going on, but yet 
so outside of the grasp of most people, including me. Like, I'm listening to you talk about this, and I'm like, thank God there's people like you. Thank whatever. Thank, th thank quarks. <laughs> there's people like you out there yeah. that are doing this. But it, it's almost like you're speaking another language. It's yeah. so strange to me. Well, it's very new stuff. These are the most fundamental questions about what, why is there... Ultimately, why is the universe the way it is? And even possibly, why is there a universe, right? But we're away from that yet. But if we're ever going to answer that, it will be by doing stuff like this.